A man ate 120 gummy probiotics for lunch. This is how his organs shut down. BC is a 29-year-old man presenting to the emergency room, disoriented. He tries to tell the admitting nurse what happened. He thinks he's talking, but words aren't coming out of his mouth. BC recently had bad luck with his teeth. They found multiple cavities. He got them filled, but some of the fillings fell out. It didn't hurt, so he didn't know until it was too late. BC eventually needed to get multiple teeth pulled, and he needed antibiotics afterwards. The mouth has a lot of bacteria, and wounds and openings in the gums can leak those bacteria into the bloodstream. But these antibiotics got him really sick. Water exited his body like never before, and it wouldn't stop. At the doctor's office, they found out what was happening. Huge amounts of bacteria live in our gut. We need them to be well. They help us with metabolism, mental health, immunity, nutrition, digestion, and overall normal function. Antibiotics are supposed to kill bacteria, so when an antibiotic is taken, especially by mouth, some of this gut bacteria is going to get destroyed. Most of the time, the body can handle this. Your other choice is not taking them and risking a life-threatening infection. But when things go wrong, the wrong bacteria takes over, crowding out all the other species. This disturbs our metabolism, our mental health, our immunity, our digestion. Everything becomes a problem. The doctor finds that BC has this wrong bacteria growing in his gut. If his problem is because of bacteria, then clearly, the solution is something that destroys bacteria, meaning it's time for him to go back on antibiotics. But antibiotics caused this. BC didn't believe that it was going to help. He started searching online for answers, and it was here where he discovered gummy probiotics. This would be very helpful to him because gummies are soft and they won't wreck his mouth. Rather than kill bacteria, he found it reasonable that adding more bacteria to crowd out this bad bacteria would be a viable solution. At first, he'd eat a couple of gummies, but the more he ate, the less loose stools he'd have. Sometimes he would wake up and feel amazing because he had eaten 50 probiotic gummies the day before. These were so delicious and so soft, he started eating more than he should have until he found himself accidentally finishing a bottle in one sitting. Sometimes he'd chew the gummies and they'd get stuck in the holes where his teeth used to be. One day, BC accidentally ate 120 probiotic gummies for lunch. He continued to eat them in the days that passed, but he didn't feel well. At first, he'd feel a little sweet taste at the back of his tongue emerge randomly throughout the day. Sometimes he'd stand up and feel like his insides were getting dragged into the ground. He'd be sweaty suddenly, and then his left side started cramping. He became dizzy and confused, and then he collapsed to the ground as he calls for 911, and he's brought to the emergency room, where we are now. At examination, the medical team notes that BC has a fever. He's confused and he can't answer all of their questions. Maybe something's wrong with his brain. A blood test finds that BC has leukocytosis. Leuco from Greek leukos meaning white, cyto meaning cell, and osis meaning a disorder of. White blood cells were floating everywhere inside his body, much more than normal. Combined with fever, this looks like he has an infection. If his abdomen hurts and it's swollen, then maybe all of this is happening because something is growing there. BC complained of pain on his left side. If you look at the abdomen, different organs sit on the left versus the right, and different organs could indicate that different things are happening. In a very small number of people, the inside is transposed a situation called situs inversus. But when the medical team take a look at the CT scan, they find that BC doesn't have situs inversus, but rather he has splenomegaly. Megaly from mega meaning large, and spleno referring to the spleen, an organ that sits on the left side that's responsible for controlling the count of blood cells in your body. Clearly, something's wrong with his spleen. If it's responsible for controlling blood cell count, and BC has leukocytosis, a problem of too many white blood cells floating around in his body, then are these associated with his splenomegaly? When the medical team take a closer look at the scan image, they find that BC's spleen is also starving of oxygen. So, is it swollen because it's starving of oxygen? Or is it starving of oxygen because it's swollen? But even worse, why is this happening? 
Well, the simplest case is that the blood supply to his spleen is being blocked. The medical team don't really know anything else about him except that he's young at 29 years old and that he has no known pre-existing health problems. They would have no idea about anything regarding his teeth because dental records are separate from medical records in the United States. If we keep going with the simplest explanation, we could think that the blood supply to BC's spleen is being blocked by a blood clot. This is when blood pools together and forms a jelly-like substance that can make flow through a narrow artery difficult. But if this was happening, where did that blood clot come from? This brings us back to his blood test. It indicated that BC might have had an infection. When the body detects bacteria that's not supposed to be inside, it activates the immune system. Sometimes when the body's in this inflammatory state, it can cause blood clots to form. But did the infection cause the blood clot? And if so, what kinds of infections block blood flow to the spleen? When the medical team listened to his heart, they noticed that it was making sounds that it wasn't supposed to make. The heart has four chambers. Blood needs to move forward in the body. You don't want it flowing backwards. The heart solves this problem by having valves at the exit of each chamber that open and close during each heartbeat. The opening and closing of these valves is what makes the normal heartbeat sound. If there's abnormal sounds being made, then maybe there's a problem with his valves. There might be some blood flowing backwards. The medical team took a probe and sent it down BC's throat. This machine will send sound waves into his heart to create an image of what's happening and causing these sounds, and what they found told them what they needed to know. When the medical team looked at the images of BC's heart, they found vegetations growing all over the valve where his heart connects to the aorta, the largest artery in the body that carries oxygenated blood everywhere. This means that part of his heart has bacteria growing all over inside of it. In the ensuing inflammation, a blood clot was spawned. When it got pumped through the body, it landed in the blood vessel going to the spleen, blocking blood flow and starving it of oxygen, causing it to swell. All of this meaning that BC has infective endocarditis. Endo meaning on the inside, card from cardio referring to the heart, and itis meaning an inflammation of, or in this case, an infection. An infection happening inside his heart. The vegetation was large. When bacteria grows in the heart, the mass formed is made not only of bacteria, but also of blood proteins and platelets. This makes the vegetation hard, and it's a problem because it makes it very difficult for antibiotics to penetrate through and act on the bacteria. Even if the bacteria can be destroyed, it might not remove the vegetation, which is physically contributing to BC's heart failure. But what can remove the vegetation is actually going in and taking it out. Surgeons look at BC. The aortic valve is close to other valves in the heart. Because of this proximity, infection can spread and they notice that BC's vegetation was floppy, physically touching the other valve, spreading the bacteria all over. Because he was young and previously healthy, they were able to recommend him for surgery so that they could go in and repair the valves, but what about his spleen? The medical team had taken part of his blood sample and put it on a petri dish so that any bacteria that might be in his blood can grow. They took a few different samples and days later when they looked at the results, they found it was the bacteria Lactobacillus paracaceae in his blood. This is the bacteria that was infecting and growing in his heart, but where did it come from? On the bottle of his gummy probiotics listed as an active ingredient was Lactobacillus paracaceae. By this time, the medical team knew about BC's troubled dental past. They knew that he recently had work done to his teeth, and they know that the sheer amount of gummy probiotics that he was eating exposed him to an extreme amount of this particular microorganism. Lactobacillus is a genus, a group of bacteria that are generally thought to be benign. They don't typically do bad things in the body. Actually, they're pretty normal. You can find them inside and on every human. They're in regular dairy products, probiotic products, products have them because they're part of the normal gut microbiome. Gummy supplements are interesting because they've exploded onto the scene in the last 15 years. It's well known that people don't adhere to their medication schedule. Sometimes it's by accident. Sometimes you just don't want to take it. But non-adherence is more than 50% of people. By being candy with a pleasing and soft texture, gummies aim to make a treat out of something that you wouldn't otherwise want to take. In the United States, these are mostly limited to supplements because the gummy version of medicines would have to go through another round of FDA approval. And minimizing the chance of someone not taking something that they need could increase the chance that they take too much of it. 
This is something we can find a lot of information on in search. And something that helps me organize my thoughts when I search is Opera, who helped make this video possible. Opera is an internet browser that I've been using for a while now, and it's my favorite because of how organized it keeps me. When I'm on the computer, there's so many choices of things to do, it's easy to get sidetracked, but Opera's workspaces helps keep me focused. I have a workspace for each video that I'm working on. Inside, I can easily organize tabs with tab islands, which can collapse saving space. When I need to communicate with my team, messengers are integrated right into the sidebar, no extensions needed, no need to switch applications. And while I'm doing all of this, Opera also has Music Player integrated right next to the messengers, where you can log into Apple Music, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube Music. There's also Aria AI, which can help give me some inspiration when I'm looking for something. Honestly, I think it's worth switching over just for the sidebar alone. I recommend checking it out, and you can download it now by clicking my link in the description. It's free. When the bacteria in BC's blood was cultured and grown, the laboratory tested to see which antibiotics act on that bacteria. This helps the medical team know which antibiotic is the right one for BC at this particular time. And as they switch him over to this, the septic blood clot blocking blood flow to his spleen no longer becomes a problem. But antibiotics alone aren't enough to rid BC of the vegetation in his heart. Antibiotics are known to cause reactions in people sometimes. We see it in the hospital where certain antibiotics are sometimes given out like water. On the flip side, you don't give antibiotics in time and the patient's infection spreads everywhere in their body and they become critically ill. Which one do you choose? BC's reaction of ingesting so much probiotic product was intense, but what exactly happened? Well, your mouth has a rich supply of blood going to it, and there's a lot of blood coming from it going back to the heart. In the setting of getting teeth pulled, the trauma to the gums causes some of that mouth bacteria to get into the bloodstream. Most of the time, the immune system and the antibiotics that you will get catch this, but sometimes the bacteria will find fatty plaques in the blood vessels and it'll stick to them. Other times, the bacteria can stick onto abnormal heart valves. It can inflame it, causing vegetation to form. BC's case is one of excess. It should be obvious to most people that an excessive bacterial load like eating 120 gummy probiotics might cause some problems. Even the supplement bottles tell you, take only as directed, do not exceed suggested dosage. But how much is too much? Do you remember that lactobacillus are found in dairy products? Well, in an extreme example, someone who had gotten a stem cell transplant got severely ill with an infection spreading throughout their whole body after eating just one cup of probiotic yogurt daily for just seven days. In a scarier example, someone with no risk factors at all ate a cup of probiotic yogurt every day for two and a half years and got endocarditis from bacteria found in that yogurt. There's other cases out there where the person doesn't even remember what dairy that they consumed, only that they did, and they had lactobacillus endocarditis. To me, those are much scarier than BC's situation because BC was blatantly obvious to gross excess. These other people were just living their regular lives, so the answer to how much is too much is largely unanswered. Now, is that to say to never eat yogurt ever again? No. I still eat mine every morning, sometimes too. For endocarditis, risk factors include things like diabetes, liver disease, immunocompromised, structural heart disease. Do you want to just totally avoid probiotics and yogurts and dairy after a dental operation? You're going to want to ask your dentist, but I'm pretty sure at least they won't suggest you eat an entire bottle of gummy probiotics. BC did have the risk factor of dental operation compounded with poor dental care. He might have had poor dental hygiene too. That may not all be his fault. Some people really do have bad luck with their teeth for whatever reason. Ironically, the reason he went to probiotics was to get away from antibiotics. But in the end, he needed to be given antibiotics in the hospital to manage his infectious endocarditis. BC's aortic valve was replaced. After the surgery, he received care from a medical team that was able to quickly identify what was happening to him. They continued his antibiotics for a few more weeks. At checkup, one year after the operation, BC was doing well as he was able to make a recovery. This footage, just the reenactment to give you the visual, is actually me eating gummy probiotics. They're very delicious. I had 20 in one sitting, but 
I spat out almost all of it. However, these have billions of units of bacteria per gummy, and I know for sure there was a non-trivial amount of this probiotic bacteria that made it into my gut. And the reason that I know this is because for the entire week afterwards, I would get a really sweet taste that would just randomly emerge from the back of my tongue. You can't say that it was the sugar from the gummies because I didn't have any for a week afterwards, and the sweet taste would just repeatedly re-emerge several days later, becoming a bitter, metallic taste. My sleep was thrown off. My dreams were the weirdest that they've been since I ate a bunch of fiber gummies last year for a video I don't know if I'll ever publish. Or if I do, you may find it on Nebula. These clearly had an effect on me, but nothing like BC's case. Please be careful with them if you feel that you absolutely need them. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.